My early first impressions are once you get things figured out and you get a good grind and a good bean, mm, fantastic. Let's maybe do the coffee inside. All right, guys, welcome back. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of a setup here. And my intention was to take all of this in my bag and go down to the park and show you a different type of travel coffee situation. Now, if you remember, I did a Brompton Barista video about a year ago and it was a lot of fun and I got a new toy today that I'm excited to test out. Now, looking at the table really quickly, you might be thinking, ah, he's one of those guys. He's gone out and bought a $5,000 espresso machine for his kitchen, and he's got one of those chemistry set style percolating coffee machines. No, I am not that guy. I'm not at like the James Hoffman level of coffee here, uh, but I do really enjoy a good cup of coffee, and I do a lot of traveling. So this is why I wanted to make this video, because a lot of you guys watching are moto campers or ultra runners or through hikers, and I started getting into unique ways of brewing coffee because I spent a lot of time in Antarctica or I spent a lot of time climbing 14ers or living out of my tent. So I wanted a coffee solution that was quick, easy, make a coffee and very portable. On the table here, basically the way I make my coffee in the morning is almost exclusively with my AeroPress. That's kind of my go-to method right now. It's just easy, it makes a slightly stronger cup of coffee. Fantastic way to brew coffee, but sometimes I also use my Kalita to do a pour over. Um, I've got this little collapsible pour over that I take sometimes when I go camping. I use this a lot on my first moto camping trip um, just because it was easier to pack than the AeroPress. But I will say I bought a hand grinder, not a super high-end one, just a decent one. And the reason I bought this grinder is because it fits into my AeroPress. So I can put this, this is my entire setup right here. Uh, for travel and for camping. Now, putting all this aside, you may remember uh, I had kind of a gimmicky toy the last time I did one of these videos. And that gimmicky toy was this. So what you're looking at here is called the hand presso. Now, for the longest time, I've raved about this thing. I've loved it. Um, I just think it's, it's really nice because basically it's a bicycle pump. Uh, that you pump up, which is also kind of embarrassing in public when you're sitting there doing this, you know. Um, but it's got a, a pressure gauge on it, so you could actually pump it up to the nine bars that are required for an espresso. It's got this little um, compartment here. You can either use ground coffee or you can use these little pods. And this is what I uh, sort of highlighted in that last video, and I like was raving about it. I take this with me sometimes on my motorcycle. Uh, I take it camping, and it's a little heavy, it's a little bulky, but I've really enjoyed it. And, you know, I've always thought that the espresso was like decent, but not great. And I'm gonna show you the new toy that I just got, and we're gonna see what kind of coffee it makes. So this is what I got. I got a Pico Presso, so it's one of these little travel espresso makers. And the difference with this guy is that uh, you actually have to pump it manually to build up the pressure. So there you go. This is what it, what it looks like when you get it. Very well packed, nice. All right, so before we actually make coffee with this thing to see if it's actually legitimate or if it's just another gimmick, I just wanted to show you how well engineered it is. This thing is sturdy and everything you need now is packed in here like a Tetris puzzle. It's quite remarkable actually. The only thing that's not in here obviously is the water, the coffee, and then whatever cup you wanna drink out of. But everything else you need, ostensibly, is in here. So I just wanna show you that it's really quite a marvel of engineering. So on the top, you've just got your cap, your water cap, and then underneath that directly, you've got your tamper here, which is really well made. It's like heavy, it's got some girth to it. And then you've got your funnel. This is so when you pour your grounds in, you don't make a huge mess. Uh, and then tucked away here in the little water tank, you've got a little brush. 
which is pretty nice for cleaning. And then this little tiny metal stir stick that you can use to distribute your grounds so that you don't get any weird channeling when you're actually making your coffee. And you flip it over and on the bottom, you've got just a cap here and take that off. And then you've got your portafilter. So I'm gonna unscrew that. I'm gonna set the actual device aside. And in here, you've got the little shower head. Um, and I'm gonna set that aside. You've got the little coffee basket. <clears throat> and then obviously the portafilter. And then what this is, this is like a little scoop. It's ridiculous. They literally give you everything. It's like a little coffee scoop. Um, and so I've already washed all this stuff. That's why it looks a little wet. Um, I cleaned it all up so that there's no chemicals or weird factory taste or smells. And I am going to go ahead and brew up some espresso with this thing and see if it's any good. And I forgot to also mention that the way it works as opposed to the um, hand presso where you pump it up beforehand is you have to pump this while brewing. And so this little thing here is actually the pump. If you spin it, it <laughs> wow, it pops out. So that's pretty clever. Uh, and then you just, as you're pumping, um, you brew your coffee and it might actually squirt out some water here because I was cleaning it. So um, yeah, so that's how we're gonna go ahead and make this. I mean, it does seem a little bit gimmicky, uh, but if it makes a good cup of coffee, that's not too bitter for my taste buds. I will gladly take this on moto camping trips. Look at my eyes got really big. I'm just like caffeine. So I'm gonna get my scale going here. We're gonna, we're gonna go on the lighter side. So I'm gonna do about, I'm gonna do about 16, 16 to 17 grams. Oh, that's way too much. All right, 17 grams. I'm gonna grind this as though I was in the field. I'm gonna set this stuff aside so you can see. The grinder I have is not the best. Uh, if I was gonna buy a really nice hand grinder, it'd probably cost me about $150, $200. I think I paid maybe 70 or 80 for this, and it gets like mediocre reviews. It's got a ceramic burr, so it's not, it's not amazing, but it, it works for, for field for camping and for field stuff. So I'm gonna put my 18 grams of coffee in here, my 17 grams of coffee in here, and I've got it set for an espresso grind. And I am going to start grinding. Probably taking about a minute and a half or so to grind all this. There's something oddly satisfying about grinding your own coffee, especially when you're out camping. It's just like very therapeutic, you know? Place the funnel on top of the basket. We've done that. That's pretty slick. It actually fits beautifully as it should. Transfer the grind into our portafilter. We've got ourselves a nice grind here. We're gonna put it right in. Ooh, that is a lot of coffee. <laughs> All right, so we've got our coffee in there. You can see that, but it's very clumpy. Use the distribution tool to distribute the coffee. So look at that, oh, we're just making it nice and very evenly distributed. This is very satisfying for my OCD brain. The instructions recommend that you preheat your uh, press. And so all that means is I'm gonna pour some hot water through it and I'm gonna pump it just to like heat up the plastics and heat up the device. And then we'll come back and we'll actually make the coffee. All right, we've heated up the device, everything is good. We've got our coffee, we're gonna tamp it. So I'm just gonna push it as far down as it'll go. And we're gonna just go with that. Put our coffee in our portafilter. Next, we're gonna put the shower head on top. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna screw our portafilter into the bottom with the shower cap in place. So now our coffee is ready to brew. All right, we've got our two devices here. Got the new Pico Presso all sealed up and ready to go. I've got the hand presso. I'm gonna put the puck in. I'm gonna put the filter on top. Put the screen on top. Now this is the intense screen. So it, in theory, makes slightly stronger coffee. Um, and we're gonna brew. Simply because it brews a little faster, I'm gonna brew the hand presso first and all that takes is Flipping it over, letting it pre-infuse for a few seconds. I've already got it pumped up. And I'm just gonna let her rip. So here goes. This was my go-to for years. And 
Next up, we've got the Pico. Everything's ready to go. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pump it eight times. Okay, we're gonna let it pre-infuse for 10 seconds. Not getting any foam whatsoever. I do wonder if perhaps the grind I'm using is still too coarse. Uh, the Pico is definitely darker. Um, same coffee beans. So I'm gonna taste them. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's try the big one. Definitely more flavorful. Definitely more flavorful, but also more bitter. So, yeah. Yeah, so this one is like a lot more watery, a lot like more diluted, and I think that's why I historically liked it because my, you know, I have such a strong, strong sense of bitter flavor in my mouth. I'm slurping, apparently that's what you're supposed to do. Super mild, like a nice light coffee flavor. Almost more like a mini Americano, <laughs> honestly. But this, I mean, that is dark. That is rich. This is also, a, like I said, a medium roast. Yeah, much more complex. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know the, the right lingo to use, the right words to use, but um, it is more bitter to me, but it's also like richer, like it's just more robust. Uh, and I feel like there's a lot more flavors in there, whereas this just feels like, tastes like if I let it steep in my AeroPress too long and then made a really small cup of AeroPress coffee that was oversteeped. So there you go. Uh, I think I need some time with this new toy to really see if uh, I'm gonna like it. I think I need to experiment with grind and uh, pumping styles, you know, every time I've watched a video on this thing, I see this beautiful foamy crema and I'm getting none of that. I'm just getting straight up <laughs> just black coffee. And, um, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a function of the fact that I live at 7,000 feet. Maybe it's an air pressure thing. Um, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, it's still a really cool little toy. Was it worth a hundred bucks? I don't know. I'm definitely gonna take it next time I go moto camping and, and see how it works out. So there you go. The Wakako Pico Presso will be my new uh, Brompton Barista toy for the foreseeable future. And who knows, I might just go back to the hand presso, but now that I have them side by side, I mean, you can see that color difference. Look at how like clear that looks. It's like a light brown and that is like black. Now, obviously it's a, huge difference in the amount of coffee as well. Like, you know, this little basket that goes in the hand press, so holds like, I don't know, eight grams or something. It's really small, whereas the thing in here holds 18 grams. So not a direct comparison for sure, but um, I know that like gimmick wise, I think this is like cooler just cause you know, you pump it up and you get to see that pressure. You get to hear it hissing at you. It's like very much like an espresso machine, but the popular opinion is, is that this makes terrible coffee. So who am I to say? I have no idea what I'm talking about, right? But at any rate, I thought maybe this would be useful to some of you uh, moto campers out there who are traditionally just drinking cowboy coffee or AeroPress coffee and don't necessarily care about all the subtle tones and flavors and all that crazy nonsense and you just want a nice cup of coffee, this thing is a lot to carry for that much coffee. Um, and so I just like this because it's a little bit more of a, of a beefier shot of espresso. Um, but honestly, like if I'm going camping for multiple days, am I going to carry this or am I just going to carry my AeroPress? Like, I don't know. I don't know, but it's worth, uh, I think it was worth checking out. So coming from someone that has very little expert knowledge in coffee, I can tell you that this is pretty cool and it makes very strong espresso. So if this is what you're looking for, it might be worth checking out. So thank you. Take care, be safe. I'll see you in the next video, which I promise won't be a coffee video. It'll be something a little more exciting. 
See you in the next video. Okay, so really quick follow-up. I think I've got this thing dialed in. So it turns out I was using the wrong grind on my grinder and kind of crappy beans. So I went out and I bought a locally roasted espresso quality bean, dialed in my grinder to the perfect fineness. And also I found out I wasn't screwing in the portafilter tight enough. So there wasn't like a perfectly airtight seal in there. And now when I pump it, it actually has a lot of resistance. Like there's a, a lot of pressure building up and it made the most beautiful, foamy, creamy espresso I have ever seen in my life, even more so than I've seen in coffee shops. And this is probably the first time I've ever drank an espresso where uh, it just, th the first flavor wasn't immediately bitter. There was like a creaminess and a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of like tartness, almost like a vinegary acidity, but not unpleasant, like it was good. Uh, and there was still some bitterness, of course, too. That just comes with espresso. But this is like actually something that uh, could be really dangerous for me because what's kept me away from this sort of intense caffeine drink is just that it's always been so bitter. And uh, yeah, I, I sense I could abuse this little device, but I am definitely taking this thing on moto camping trips now that I know how to dial it in just right. So... My early first impressions are once you get things figured out and you get a good grind and a good bean, mm, fantastic. Really, really delicious, man.